Hello rock people, this is Dave the Geology Dude. This video is a part of a series on mineral identification. This episode is on the identification of a type of clay mineral called kaolinite. There are many different types of clays, but kaolinite is one of the most famous types of clay. It is widely used in many products, including dishware, medicine, and even in food. In fact, there is a good chance that you may regularly eat clay too. Parts of the video are from a college class I taught years ago. I certainly look young in this video. I hope that you enjoy it. This clay, there's lots of different types of clays. This is probably the, one of the best known ones. This one is non-metallic earthy and basically it looks like a clump of whitish, off-white to light gray dirt. Also very uh, powdery. Uh, so this would be, uh, so it can come in different colors. Kaolinate is a very useful product. Again, based on its composition and how it breaks and stuff like that, it's used for a number of different things. One thing is that uh, this is the key material for making fine china and porcelain. You know, for uh, spark plug por porcelain is made out of this stuff. It is a, you know, a really good thickening agent. So you grind it up into a powder and your liquid becomes thicker. It always helps to have paint stick to the walls. If it was as runny as water, it would have a hard time staying on the walls. So this is a thickening agent that you can use to uh, thicken paint. In some types of milkshakes, this is the thickening agent. There's some places that call it triple thick milkshakes. Guess what the triple part is? It just passes through you. It doesn't hurt you at all. I remember my daughter once when she was a couple three years old, we, we went to a restaurant and a fast food restaurant and went home and she only drank half the shakes and it kind of depends where you are in the batch. Uh, but in the morning, you had, had forgotten the remaining amount of milkshake on the, on the counter and you would think everything was melted, but actually the, whole, the drill holes from where the straw went into the shake were still there intact in the morning. There was so much clay in the shake. So that's why the, the shakes are so much thicker than regular ice cream shakes, because they have this as a thickening agent. No problem, you know, it passes through you, okay? But, uh, you know, it's, but it's, if you like that thick, thick shake, that's the stuff. It is also used in medicine. So it's like I said, it's a thickening, binding type of agent. So say I'm sick, say I have diarrhea and I need to bind myself together, okay? I'm obviously uh, going to the bathroom quite a bit. Well, I go to the drugstore and I buy a product called Kaopectate, which uh, has kaolinite clay as an active ingredient. So uh, you're paying the big bucks for uh, kaolinite. And uh, you know, you can just go to a local shake shop, uh, maybe to help solve that problem in a more tastier way. It's uh, useful for that. It is also, uh, you know, basically it likes to absorb materials as well. Uh, like I said, it's sort of like a thickening agent. It's the active ingredient to uh, kitty litter, okay, for the secret clumping agent. Okay, so kitty litter has this stuff in it. If I have a drippy oil pan on my car, you know, I want to absorb that stuff off my garage floor, I will put this stuff down. And so just don't confuse it with the stuff in the triple thick shakes, okay? So, but uh, the way you identify this, uh, obviously this is uh, earthy and luster, but uh, because it likes to absorb water, uh, it will, you know, I have a wet tongue in my mouth, of course, it's gonna want to absorb the moisture from my tongue. Just like the salt crystal for halite, I dab it against my tongue and uh, it tastes salty, this is going to want to grab onto the moisture of my tongue and kind of stick to my, my tongue. So I just, just dab it on the end of your tongue. Uh. Ah, kind of comes off kind of hard, but tastes like dirt, okay? And so basically that's the way you identify it. And so uh, just like the halite though in our uh, labs and, uh, and also potential on the test, if that's gonna be out, obviously I don't want everyone to be licking the same rock. You don't have to feel compelled to do that. I won't hold you back though if you really want to, but uh, you know, I will put down for kaolinite clay that this is a tongue grabber, okay? Tongue grabber. So the halite's gonna be salty taste, this is gonna be a tongue grabber. Years ago, I had a geology field trip to a kaolinite clay pit. One of the students on the trip collected some bone dry kaolinite directly from the mine. She would dab, dab, dab the rock on her tongue multiple times, and since the kaolinite was so dry, it would stick, 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 stick to her tongue. 
It stuck to her tongue very well, but she stopped doing it later in the day because it was starting to irritate her tongue. Then she brought home a fist-sized rock of kaolinite. When she saw her boyfriend, she handed the kaolinite rock to him and said, Put this rock on your tongue. It will stick to it. The boyfriend, however, took the entire fist-sized rock on, onto his entire tongue, and the rock latched on solidly. It was like sticking your tongue to a frozen metal pole in wintertime. The kaolinite clay did not remove itself from his tongue easily. It was quite a struggle. After the rock was removed, he was upset. He said, why did you ask me to do that? And she said, well, you weren't supposed to put the whole thing on your tongue. Soon after this event, I heard that they broke up. Supposedly, they had trust issues. Please be careful when licking your rocks. And uh, it's also used in, uh, you know, modeling clay. Like uh, when you were in uh, grade school and stuff like that, you were making your little... Uh, pots, and rolling your little coils and stuff like that. Well, this is the ingredient to make those things is out of this. So lots of different things. You know, it's in medicine, it's in milkshakes, it's in kitty litter, it's a thickening agent, and fine porcelain, all those things. This is what this stuff is, kaolinite, all right? Uh, there's actually kind of a sad story, a uh, sobering story on this. I had a, an African student in my class one time, and she was from a very poor country. And she said that oftentimes they did not have enough to eat. And so they had hunger pains. So what do you do with your hunger pains? Well, they called this kaolin, where they grew up. And so they ate this stuff to fill their stomachs so they wouldn't feel hunger pains when they didn't have enough to eat. And so, uh, you know, that's a sad fact of how some people have to live. So they... Years ago, I know someone who joined the Peace Corps. They went to Asia and were assigned to a country that is located between China and Russia. At the home of their host, kaolinite clay was a regular meal supplement. This plate of clay is a picture of what my friend ate. There appears to be two or three different types of clay on this plate based on color and texture. My friend said that each clay type had a slightly different taste. For example, one clay tasted a bit sweet and another a bit salty. Again, Eating this clay as a food supplement had no effect on their health. Clay is a very soft mineral, and this type of clay is mined from rocks that formed on ancient lake bottoms and ocean floors. As long as there's no sand in the clay, the minerals contain nothing hard that could easily harm or abrade their teeth. Have to live. So it provides no nutrition, would just pass through their body, but it did at least relieve them of that particular uh, problem. It did not feed them, though. And so, uh, so lots of uses of this material. And so kaolinite clay is this stuff. And as I said, this would be a tongue grabber on the test or in the rock box for you to use.